right, all right. Well, welcome, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Maryland's Cafe Society Radio Show on YouTube. Today is Saturday, March 30th, 2019. Hey, we're getting closer and closer to spring, and I am excited about it. Here in the Midwest, we're still in that big battle between spring and winter. And now spring is winning, so I'm excited. I can't wait. I love spring, as you guys know, and I just hope that we get to enjoy at least two to three months of the 60s and 70s before we get into the heat of the summer. So how are you? How was your week? What have you been up to? Well, in news, a lot has happened. Is your head still spinning? <laughs> It's hard to keep up with, but uh, nevertheless, we continue to march on, right? All right. Well, I had a pretty good week as well, and uh, here we are on Saturday. By the way, did you check out the blog? I did manage to get a blog up. I did um, record a couple of karaoke moments, but, you know, we're our own worst critics. That's what they say, and so I... Um, I just didn't feel good about them, so I, I did not post either. But perhaps we'll get one up by midweek next week. All right, ready for some on this day in history? Well, we all know that it's still Women's History Month, and so I'm trying to focus on women for on this day in history. So on this day in history back in 1937, Charlotte Johnson Baker was the first woman physician to practice medicine in San Diego, California. And guess what? She was born on this day in history in 1937. She um, practiced obstetrics as well as uh, gynecology at the St. Joseph's Hospital. Also on this day in history in 1923, Zeta Phi Beta sorority formed at Howard University. And of course, uh, today, on this day in history, and they formed in 1923, but today on this day in history, they actually incorporated. And uh, speaking of women and the Greeks, we're going to be spotlighting a phenomenal woman on today's show for uh, Women's History Month. And I'm just so excited to shine the spotlight on Juliana Stratton. She, of course, is the first African-American woman to serve as Illinois' lieutenant governor. And, of course, she was sworn into office in January of this year. Now, she's um, the third straight female lieutenant governor uh, here in the state of Illinois and the fourth African-American woman in United States history to hold a lieutenant governorship. Um, she, of course, has a stellar background, uh, attended uh, DePaul University to receive her uh, doctorate in law. She uh, earned her bachelor's of science in broadcast journalism from the uh, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Um, her political experience is, is vast. Uh, of course, uh, she was um, uh, Illinois State Representative in District 5 for a couple of years. And um, from there, she became candidate uh, or uh, shared the ticket with Governor J.B. Pritzker to be elected Lieutenant Governor here in the state. Um, she, boy... Uh, served on all kind of committees as uh, Illinois State representative and her professional experiences stellar as well. She um, worked in law. She was a lawyer for a number of years and then um, also in government and city government and eventually um, state government. So um, again, just a, um, a standout here. Uh, representing women in the state of Illinois as lieutenant governor and again that spotlight is on Juliana Stratton. I also want to spotlight this young lady now you guys who are on social media may have heard her story um, this past week when she went public um, on her living conditions which 
uh, she announced that she was homeless. Now, just to give you some stats, according to the 2018 Department of Housing and Urban Development, homelessness here in the United States rose by 2% over the past year. And for the second year in a row, the New York Times has called it a crisis driven by gentrification and the lack of affordable apartments for poor and working class city dwellers. And uh, of course, we know that African Americans make up about 13% of the population. But sadly, 40% of homeless individuals happen to be African Americans and so it just sort of um, highlights uh, the, the the seriousness of homelessness especially for African Americans and I'm of course referencing D. Barnes who um, those who follow hip-hop um, re recall that that she was one of the pioneers in, in hip-hop journalism you may or may not recall uh, there was a time in, in entertainment and music where hip-hop and even R&B was not quite popular music and so you know for for any anyone in journalism to to kind of um, take it on was extraordinary and so D. Barnes and Wendy Williams and a few others were were in that group of those who, who uh, of course, help um, grow hip hop and and urban music uh, to the degree in which we know it now. It's it's considered popular music now. But um, yeah, she announced that she was going through some financial hardships and was about to be evicted from her home. And uh, she started this GoFundMe page where she just laid it all out there. And uh, of course, uh, the response was was outstanding. As always, human beings stepped up, and um, I think she initially uh, set her her goal at five thousand dollars, but has surpassed that goal. I believe she's um, around thirty thousand right now. Um, and of course, there were some some critics who uh, jumped on on her uh, social media to criticize her and tell her to just get a job w when she announced <laughs> uh, or clapped back as they say um, uh, just kind of clarifying that listen I had two jobs unfortunately they were minimum wage paying jobs but um, she had two jobs and one of them she she lost but you know it just kind of speaks to to um, where we are in in society and I guess has always been uh, when it comes to professional uh, women and particularly professional black women um, many of us as I stated um, held her and, and Wendy Williams and, and others in high esteem and never imagined that they would be facing um, the situation that they are considering their talent their uh, you know their skill set their their training their experience um, and look look at this you know so anyway um, so it's more than just go get a job you know it's it's it, it kind of um, highlights the 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 uh, systemic uh, racism that happens here in in America and, and quite frankly around the world when it comes to to um, uh, women and women of color securing employment um, and again you know we just want to to kind of spotlight her and um, you know just uh, tip our hat to all those who jumped on board to to help her out and she did announce I think um, th uh, Thursday night that on social media that she has been offered a professional job um, and of course, you know, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but back in the early 90s, she made news headlines because she had been brutally assaulted by uh, Dr. Dre. Um, and there, you know, the word on the street was as a result of that conflict and uh, whatever led to it, she had been blocked, blackballed from, from working. 
and which is what led to you know her her cycle of of um, of unemployment underemployment and just trying to uh, survive and so again um, her story just just kind of uh, sheds light on where we are here in in the United States uh, there was a sense of shame as she shared with being in her situation but of course realizing that um, you know it was something that was beyond her control I hope that you know we can get past this whole um, backlash that happens to women in particular you know uh, when some people perceive that they may have said something or done something um, against them or about them and and um, you know they begin to attack their character and put the word out um, which really is a form of witchcraft if you think about it spiritually you know um, to, to the point where you know you're you're not no one wants to hire you no one wants to um, you know deal with you so to speak and it affects your ability to earn money and here we are hearing her story um, you know of the trials and tribulations that so many others out there dealing with and um, unfortunately uh, facing homelessness and other uh, financial crises uh, and I know some are saying well you know it's not just black women or women uh, everybody is kind of dealing with that and, and that may be true but the numbers show that it happens more so to women and specifically African American women than others alright so um, it, you know I guess the great takeaway once again is uh, kudos to her for speaking out and shedding the light on this um, it's not about you know her setting up the GoFundMe page and and people uh, well it is about that you know again uh, just showing that the uh, ph philanthropic um, um, spirit that that a lot of people have um, and and contributing to her GoFundMe page and compassion you know and, and, and offering help but it's also about you know um, I think just uh, the black working professionals being able to ask for help and sort of kicking shame to the so side and, and reaching out to others to to really show what they're really going through because sometimes you know you you put on the facade you put on the face you know and uh, the image out there is that you're okay but in a lot of instances you're not so again congratulations to her on her job offer I'm sure this is a turnaround from for her and um, hopefully for many others as well so I just wanted to spotlight D Burns as well and here's something that's noteworthy guys did you hear about this one um, apparently a never before seen photograph of Harriet Tubman has surfaced it shows her as a stylish young woman and it is on view at the Smithsonian's National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington DC now the museum's director Lonnie Bunch did an interview with Smithsonian magazine and what he had to say about the photo is that it adds quote it adds significantly to what we know about this fierce abolitionist it helps to humanize such an iconic figure now uh, you guys know that other photos that we've seen of Harriet Tubman uh, depict her or show her as being older um, stern faced and some might even say mean and I guess considering the seriousness of the work that she did and the conditions that they were living in at that time um, you know um, her work to help free slaves and and run the Underground Railroad she was a spy for the Union Army and um, you know uh, it was serious uh, dangerous work that she was doing so I guess when you take that into account uh, there wasn't much for her to smile about right my goodness 
but this particular photo shows her to, in what appears to be maybe her 30s or 40s, youthful looking, um, dressed in a beautiful fashion dress for that time, that time period. And um, this uh, particular photo is reported to be part of an album that belonged to the Emily Howland, uh, which was a 19th century philanthropist, educator, and abolitionist. The album also includes the only known photo of John Willis Menard, the first African American man elected to the United States Congress, although he was never permitted to actually take office. Nonetheless, he was elected. Now, um, uh, the museum and the um, Library of Congress, and when I say the museum, I mean the National Museum of African American History and Culture, and the Library of Congress purchased this album from Swan Auction Galleries in New York, and the album is going to be, or continue to be, on special display through this weekend in the museum's Heritage Hall before joining the ongoing Slavery and Freedom e exhibit. Now, um, they're saying that it's not so hard to get in the museum anymore. Remember <laughs> when they first opened, it was so difficult to get in. But uh, now uh, they're saying it's much easier for folks to gain access to the museum. So be sure to check it out when you get an opportunity. All right? All right, and that's it for the spotlight and on this day in history. Um, I do want to just briefly... Uh, visit uh, the stock market and just kind of talk about that for a little bit before we get into our cafe talk. So um, Stocks on the Move is Progress Software. They're up $6.05 to forty-four thirty-seven. Also Science Applications International Corp is up $3.40. Blackberry LTD, my goodness, they're up $1.21. Um, of course, uh, it's reported a boost in licensing revenue helped push profit <laughs> for BlackBerry. Um, also, CarMax is up $6.12. Now, those that are not doing so well is RH. They're down $28.98. Um, they slashed its full year outlook of course citing weakness in the high-end housing market and also not doing so well as Oxford Industries they're down three dollars and two cents due to weak profits and revenue forecast so that's a, a brief look at uh, your stock market now the Dow is up however plus to 11.22 the S&P 500 is also up 18.96 as is the NASDAQ up plus 60.16 and then just getting to our cafe talk what I wanted to just kind of uh, piggyback on of course is um, the blog that I wrote earlier in the week and of course it was um, an a inspiring blog. My purpose was to to inspire folks as we closed out the uh, first three months of the year. We, um, those of us who who set goals and and um, benchmarks in our uh, business or work or whatever it is, you know, it's a time where you kind of reflect and revisit to see how well things went or did not go and so it was meant to kind of inspire folks but I did hear from a few people who who um, sort of challenged my line of, of thinking um, in writing the blog and uh, suggested that perhaps I left out some key components of why someone may not be achieving their goals or uh, benchmarks and, uh, and, th and they made two important points. One of them is people. Sometimes the people around you um, aren't helping you get to um, your goals. Which leads to the next um, point that was made that someone uh, suggested and that is sometimes your location is not uh, the right um, location for you to grow and exceed and excel and hit your goals. 
So um, I just wanted to point that out, you know, again, um, not suggesting that I, I my point in the blog was not to suggest that well it was it was to suggest that perhaps if you're not hitting your goals and it's been a while that maybe you should look at doing something else but um, if you do what you do well you know you do it and you are getting that from maybe you know people that you respect who are in the same field that you're in uh, it may not be uh, that that you're working outside of your your gift or your talent or um, your calling, so to speak. It just may be that you need to change locations. You know what I'm saying? Or um, uh, or uh, reach out and try to assemble a different team. You know, so that all kind of goes into to the the reflecting and asking those questions and you know um, uh, maybe uh, selecting people who will be um, more productive you know who are part of your team but they may be more productive uh, than others or uh, just in general you know you just need people around you who are positive who are affirming you who are lifting you who are um, helping you reach those um, goals that you set for yourself all right all right um let's see what else do we have i think that is it it's a short show today um i know i always say it's a short show but i say that when i don't have guests because you know having a guest sometimes um kind of sp spreads the show out and, and and makes it a bit longer but of course it's just us and um uh, you know, I just wanted to to just pop in. We missed last Saturday due to the uh, online conference that I was attending. Boy, was it good! It was the Business and Leadership Conference um, that um, uh, is is um, that takes place at the Living Word Christian Center, and um, every year. And you know, they bring in some phenomenal guest speakers and and um, individuals who who kind of help um, you know broaden your 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 spiritual uh, journey as well as your business and leadership skills and so um, superb and excellent and um, you know I just I was gonna pop in last Saturday just to say hi but I decided to just kind of um, uh, not ha have to worry about that so that I could focus on on um, um, you know, uh, being an attendee at at this conference and just kind of soaking up everything that I could to to help myself and and you know helping myself helps me help you as we meet every Saturday here on YouTube. So um, that is what is up now. I will, as I stated, try to get to um, to a karaoke moment. I, I have been practicing one particular song and um, this conference from last weekend sort of uh, brought to remembrance another song that I, well actually several songs that I love and um, it, it, it's a spiritual religious song and so I wanted to do that for you um, but again I wasn't too uh, impressed <laughs> with myself and um, my delivery of the the karaoke moment that I was having on that particular song, so I recorded it twice, and it just you know, and I know we're our own worst critics, but I just you know I I just didn't want to post it, so I, maybe I'll continue to practice with that one and and deliver it by Wednesday of next week, or switch it up and go back to the the initial one that I was going to put out. But nevertheless. Hopefully by next Wednesday you'll get another karaoke moment from me and um, another blog. And next Saturday, of course, we'll be right back here on YouTube to share more. I'm working on getting some guests um, and uh, you know just kind of letting you know what's happening um, in the world and letting you hear from some people that you may not normally have an opportunity to hear from. So. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it though folks. I, again, um, I just want to remind you that you can find me on Twitter at Maryland's Cafe Soch. You can uh, find me on Facebook at Maryland's Cafe Society. 
you can also go to MarylandsCafeSociety.com to check out the website and obviously here on YouTube you can check it out be sure that you follow like subscribe share and all of that good stuff when you do check out the social media and um, comment too if 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 you so feel the need to all right you ready for what love is love is just one stop away all right and remember if you don't do anything else this week be sure that you live you laugh and you love as always it's been a pleasure and a privilege looking forward to next week folks have a good one peace <music>